Greetings everyone, this is not an expert and we're back again with another video. Uh, we're basically going to solve the third problem in the daily encoding problem, um, problem statements. Uh, so let's just get right down to it, right? Okay, so this particular problem is pretty hard. It's actually showing medium over here, but I feel it's, it can be categorized as hard. Uh, and the problem was asked by Google. So yeah, <laughs> you know, you can expect something over there. Uh, all right, cool. Let's get down to the problem statement. Uh, the problem statement defines that um, given the root to a binary tree, uh, we need to implement a serialize function, which serializes a tree into a string and deserializes it uh, into the same tree. Uh, so we've given the structure and it seems pretty okay. -ish. This is the structure that we have. Uh, and basically, what the what the problem statement is telling us to do is that is that we need to implement a function which is a serialized function which is going to con which is going to perform serialization. So if you don't know what serialization is, it's basically a method of converting an object into a stream of bits or bytes or whatever you want to call it. Right. The reason for the, this is is because uh, let's say that you have. Um, you have another server that you want to communicate with, right? So over the network, for you to pass an object, you need to convert it into a stream of bytes, right? And while you do that, when the, when that entire operation happens, you know, the, the data is sent over to the next server and the next server needs to deserialize it so that it can understand what was the exact object that you had sent out. Um, so there are a lot of practical applications for this problem. It's a really good problem as well. Uh, and fortunately, I was able to find a problem similar to this uh, on lead code. So let's go down to that problem. All right, cool. So as you can see here, uh, the problem uh, which is given the title of the problem is serialized and deserialized binary tree. It's almost the same. Uh, they've explained what serialization is and and they're given the same this thing. So they are trying to uh, they're making us understand that, hey, uh, you still need to implement a serialized function. And they've given a little bit of an interface to us. Um, to code this out. So basically, if you go through this editor, we have the same tree node representation, uh, which is pretty simplistic. There's not much there. <clears throat> uh, but the code which we're going to have to write is going to be written over here. So, uh, so the first thing that I would urge you to do is make sure that, <clears throat> sorry, make sure that whatever you're trying to implement, right, um, you're trying to do it on your own. Uh, so I would say that please pause the video. Uh, and yeah, so I'm gonna get directly into this problem. So let's quit, get down to it. So uh, let's just look at, so this is the first time I'm actually doing this problem. Um, and it seems like we're just creating an object or this class and we're just calling the functions. Um, root is just, I believe is, we don't have to worry about it. It's just a tree representation. Um, cool. So I'm sort of thinking about this uh, and the few things that are sort of coming to my mind is that in the, in the problem statement itself, there are a few hints which are given down. Uh, the first hint which is given is that serialize is going to be converted into a string. Uh, and that's a cool thing for me to understand because uh, if it's going to be a string, how would I understand what exactly is its representation? Uh, by that, what I mean is how would I know when the null occurs, whether it's on the left hand side, whether it's on the right hand side and so on and so forth, right? So if this is, if we look at this particular example, how do I understand like uh, the two over here is basically the left uh, node of one, right? For this reason, what we can do is we can store our variables in, in a pre-order traversal way and we'll, do, we'll perform pre-order traversal and basically we're going to store all the data inside a list, right? It's pretty simplistic for now. Uh, but then you would be asking me, how would you understand like um, this is now like two does not have any children. Um, the way we can do this is basically we can contain a delimiter, uh, which will help us understand that, hey, there's no value over here. Um, this is completely empty and that's it. Um, so cool. So the way we can sort of make a delimiter is I will just call it delimiter and we'll just, you know, give it hash or something, some value. Um, some XYZ value. I'm giving it hash because I'm assuming that the uh, value which is going to be given inside my node is not going to contain that particular hash value. If it is, then we are screwed, but I'm hoping it's not. Um, 
Cool. And what do I say? Whenever you're starting with a problem, always start with the base conditions. It will give us something to start on. So we'll just say if not root, or that's the only base condition that we can get, return an empty string. So the serialized function is going to return a string no matter what. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a temporary array. Um, this array is just basically going to contain all the all the, all the node values, right? Um, and again, the, it's the same reason what I just described before. Why we're trying to do this? It's pretty simplistic. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to call a recursive traversal on the. Uh, we want to do the pre-order traversal, right, on the root. Um, it's a little tricky though. Uh, so what we can do is we can sort of create an inner function. So let's just call, let's just make a quick inner function. Let's call it traverse. Let's pass in the root to this guy. It's pretty simple. Uh, we would need to pass in the root so that we can we can understand which particular, actually let's not give it root. Let's give it um, node. It will be better for us to understand so that we can traverse through each and every single node. Uh, and the way we're going to go about this is, is that it's, it's exactly similar to what we do in pre-order traversal, right? So instead of just printing the values out, we're just going to push those values in inside our temporary files, right? Uh, let me just do a quick check as well, whether the value is an integer or not. I have it sort of just converted into a string uh, just for our case. Um, right, and now we just have to call uh, the pre-order traversal. So let's just do node left. To, and let's just go to the node right. And as I mentioned before, we would be considered in the case when we encounter a none, right? In which case, we are going to say that inside our temp files, we want to append our delimiter. Cool. So basically, inside our temp files, uh, okay, so we need to call this function as well. So let's just call this function over here with root. And inside our temp files, basically what we're going to have is a list of um, a list of delimiters and a list of numbers, or uh, represented as a string or whatever a string, right? Um, one thing which we did note before as well was the fact that we need to return a string to the serialized function. So let's do that real quick. I'm just going to give it. Uh, I'm just going to convert this entire list into a space. Uh, the uh, basically a string which is um, we're broken down by a space that should that should be okay um, and basically this should do it right so basically we would have a string representation um, and now we will get down to a deserialized function so before we get down to the deserialized function what I want you to note is let's just keep temp files as well. Um, and before we do our data, uh, I'm assuming that data is the same thing which, which has been passed in, sorry. So data is going to be the string. Uh, when we do a split on this data, it's going to convert it into a list. Now, even though a list follows an uh, iterator protocol, I'm still going to convert it into an iter. Uh, the reason for this is basically, if you don't know what an iterator is, uh, it's basically any object that follows an iterator protocol. Uh, in Python, uh, if you don't know what iterator protocol is, I would suggest that you Google it. Uh, but it's pretty simplistic. Any any class which implements a underscore underscore next function and underscore underscore iter function basically gets converted into an iterator. Uh, and the reason for that is, is basically every single list representation, everything that you can put inside a for loop and you can traverse through it or iterate through it, basically is an uh, follows an iterator protocol right so and the way and the way you can do that is basically you can just implement the next uh, next function so if i if i do um next of temp valves and i keep on doing this over and over again i'm going to keep on getting elements one by one so the first would be one then if i do this again it would be two so on and so forth right um so that's what we're going to try to do. The reason why I'm using an iterator and making it a little bit complicated is only because I don't want to maintain which index are we particularly at. I can do that, but I don't want to do that. Uh, unfortunately, I'm lazy, uh, but I feel like this is a better approach um, because all I'm doing is I'm just going to the next value, right? Cool. So I think that we should um, basically inside our return, 
uh, we just need to return a tree node right as represented in the return type uh, and to do that we need to make a function so let's make a function let's call it build uh, build does not need any parameters as such um, and the reason I'm doing a build function is basically so that we can construct our tree node right so as soon as you supply the temp files it should be able to understand how it needs to compute all those things correct so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say well next of temp valves I'm over here I'm just going to the next value uh, and if the val is basically equal to a delimiter that's the first condition that first base condition that we need to handle if that's the case what we need to do is we need to return a none so basically this this should give you an idea on what I'm trying to do um, so because of this base condition I wrote none because it's sort of helping me understand what build needs to return and build this build inner function is basically going to return a tree node or I'm hoping that it does uh, right and now it seems pretty easy right because all I have to do is since we did pre-order traversal beforehand uh, I just need to do the same representation of a pre-order traversal while building the entire thing so I'll just say I'll just assign a new variable I'll say I'll construct something called a tree node um, and basically convert this into an int and then the store so basically I would have a tree node which is going to contain a, a value inside its val operation um, and inside its left and right it's not going to contain anything right so if you can see over here the constructors are doing the same thing um, it's pretty simplistic till now cool and all we have to do is uh, we just need to maintain what is going to be stored inside our left and our right right and we're just going to recursively keep we're going to keep on recursively calling it our build function so if you do a node right oops uh, sorry and there we have it so we have node right node left um so let's take a simple simple example oh and we just need to return the none node sorry as well and yep and a build I think they should do it. Um, all right, so we can take a quick example of what would happen if we just have uh, two things. Like, don't consider this entire example. Let's just consider one, two, and everything else is null, right? Um, so our representation over here, in that case, would be, I'll just comment it out. I'll just write, it's going to be one, comma, two, comma, hash, comma, hash, right? Uh, and when this thing is going to be supplied to our um, inside our data, when this thing is going to be pushed in, uh, what's going to happen is I'm just going to say that you know as soon as I as soon as I get to the next element, which is going to be the first element, uh, I'm just going to push that, make a new node out of it, push that inside my node, and then basically I trade the left portion. So the left portion is going to be going to call this thing recursively. It's going to come here to two. Uh, then 2 is going to be made out um, and basically as soon as 2 is going to get built out uh, the left and the right in this scenario will be hash values so it's going to come over here uh, it's going to go to the delimiter and it's going to return a none and this thing would be a none and this thing would be a none as well so when this node gets represent, uh, returned back to the one recursive call at that time what's going to happen is um, we're going to have a tree node where we have 2 uh, and hash and hash and that thing is going to be assigned to our left so it's going to be one then two and then so on and so forth so it's pretty simplistic oh i believe i think that, oh and i think it should be one comma two comma and there should be one more hash um so that's my bad another hash would be there just to represent what's on the right hand side of the one right and and that's it so basically i think this should work we've taken simple example as well to explain our approach uh, and yeah, let's just try running it. Whoops, uh, sorry. And we are running it. <coughs> and I believe this thing is running fine. Uh, let's just submit our solution, see what happens. Okay, so we're missing out on one condition. Um, So what's the condition here? Oh, all right. So yeah, so this base case over here is sort of uh, it's, it's not running correctly um, 
actually we can just remove the space case um it's not required anymore so let's just go ahead and run this again hopefully this should work um and it's taking a little bit of time but hopefully it should run oh, and yes there it is so basically our solution is faster than 90 percent of all the python online submissions um you don't really need to worry about those things uh, i would say that don't really I mean, it's okay if it's if it's fast, it's pretty good. Um, but don't worry about it. We just need to solve the problem for now, and that's it. Um, so that's it for this video. I hope this entire approach was um, easy for you to understand. <clears throat> if it's not, um, do let me know in the comments below. And of course, I would be pasting in the lead code or link in the description below. And uh, like the video and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next video. And have a good day. Thank you.